hey there and today it's a review day and it's a kind of special review day really because it's another one of Glyn Quetch's blends for his new business GQ Tobacco's and this is similar to one he produced before called Red Lace but it is essentially is re-blended it so it's slightly different and what are the results of this reblend? Because sometimes you can overwork something and it can not work the second time. But in this case, it's worked incredibly well. The blend I'm talking about is not slice rouge and it's very good indeed. Let's have a look. Well, the contents of this are Virginia, Perique, with some Kentucky. Now, let's have a look for ourselves. I put it in a different bag. I still don't know how you got that much tobacco in such a little bag, Glyn. Blimey. Talk about putting a quart into a pint into a quart pot. Now, the first thing that strikes you is mm, it's got a spiciness a sweet tone to it a kind of malty mm, a malty tone that reminds you of a porter or a stout more porter than stout I think and then it has tones of sherry about it which is brought up more than this blend. Definitely a slight tone of sherry about it. And that's undercut by the sweetness which runs through the blend. And you get a good earthy tone as well. All in all, very pleasant smell. Now let's have a look at this. You can see the Virginias. Mmm. Hints of the Kentucky there, and lots of Perique. The, if anybody's had Glyn Quelch's blends in his style before, it's hardly a shock that he uses lots of Perique. But he balances them out very well with flavour. They may be, it may be abundant, but it's still well balanced. You get the flavour of the Perique come through quite strongly, but it doesn't feel wrong. It always feels right. kind of contributes to the blend so well. Now if you look at the list of ingredients and you think that's a really high amount of perique but it carries it well and that's not an easy thing to do. Now it's a kind of ribbon I'd say more ready rub than ribbon myself and here it is. I put some on my hand. Oh, sorry about this. I've got it balanced on a box full of Mr. Men books, funny enough. Oh, all in all, a very pleasant looking tobacco. I've been getting into these ready rubs lately and I've been enjoying them. There are some bad ready rubs, but this is a very good one. Now, smoking experience. We shall go back. As always, I'm halfway through the bowl, and this is my second bowl. The first one was in a clay pipe, and now I'm smoking it in my Ambrosali Meerschaum. This is made in Tanganyika. And the mission was mined in Ambrosley National Park. This is a rhino one. It's very well. It smokes very well indeed. I shall relight because it's gone out. And then 
give it a slight gentle temp. As I was lighting it to start it, I took it easy, didn't rush up the light, and it lit very well. Mm. As you can see, it's a nice fall smoke. If you can see me through the smoke. <laughs> yeah. You get a nice creamy level of, from the smoke. And when you first light it, I first noticed the Virginia come through with that perique. And it was a nice flavour. Actually, I'm a, I'm more than halfway, and I'm getting near the end of this one. Hmm. Now, as I said, you got that Virginia sweetness come through, and with that nice spice level from the Perique, and then. Coming through with that, was that Kentucky and a sort of earthiness and hmm. Yes, I'm still getting that the from the Kentucky and it's interacting with the Perique and the Virginia very well. I'm also getting a kind of sourness from it, but it's in a good way. And you've got those transitions going on from sweet to sour and I noticed on the first bowl it went from that sweetness to the sour then it started getting sweet again but I've got a feeling it will subtly change every time you smoke it I'm getting a kind of astringency now. Hmm. All in all, a very pleasant tobacco. It will definitely be worth searching out. I will put a link down below to the GQ Tobacco's website. I'm not sure if it's up and running yet, but as soon as it is, there will definitely be a link there because I will be definitely ordering more of this lace rouge now it's a very rich and complex tobacco and it definitely gets a thumbs up from me in fact two thumbs up I think I'll be ordering this in batches at the moment and then I'll have three batches of it for my cellar and some to smoke. I uh, will open one batch in a year's time and then a second batch I will open in five years. Then the third batch will be opened in ten years. It will be interesting to see the progression over time but I think this will age very well indeed. It will become richer and deeper and very complex indeed. And a very satisfying smoke. So if you sell a tobacco, I think this would be a perfect candidate for that. Now, drinks choice, because it's not just beer today. I have chosen some beers. I have chosen an Australian beer. I've chosen 
Cooper's Sparkling Ale. It will provide some nice contrast to that spice level. And interestingly enough, this goes very well with spicy food. And it's a very interesting beer. One of my favourite Australian beers. Now, I had to choose something from Hops Grown in Kent, our neighbour in Essex. And I've chosen that India Pale Ale. Shepherd Name, the superb brewer, and that India Pale Ale is a wonderful, wonderful beer. But you don't have to just choose beer with this. I reckon choose a blended whiskey. Maybe, oh, mm, some Ballantines would go superb with this. Or, mm, some Bally Nickel Java. Always good choices. But I have also chosen to go with this some port. Port will provide a very interesting counterbalance and contrast to the beer. And well good port is always nice. Especially in the winter. I love a port in the winter. So check it out for yourself. If you can think of a wine or a good spirit, maybe a nice brandy. Put it in the description below, in the bucket, uh, in your comment below. <coughs> See, if we all come up with something, we can all learn. And that's always a good thing. Because I'm always looking for options to go with a good tobacco. So, hope you liked it. See you later.